We'll be bringing you a lot more from the campaign trail on our election headquarters. But the Ghana Audit Service has confirmed it is carrying out an investigation into the movement of various amounts from accounts of the Ghana Re Revenue Authority held at several commercial banks. The service has clarified the exercise is to establish that all the monies have been duly accounted for and that none of it has ended up in the wrong hands. The reaction from the audit service comes on the back of some letters making the rounds on social media suggesting some 52.5 billion Ghana cities of tax revenue has been transferred by GCB Bank into questionable accounts. Uh, Winston Amway has been getting the backstory and joins me now with more on this. So Winston, for those who are unaware of these letters, please give us a background to the story. Well, for Israel, there were a few uh, concerns about the... Uh, unavailability of records on transfers of some 52 billion Ghana cities. And that generated lots of controversies. And then, you know, the audit service came out there and issued a statement indicating that, look, so they have seen all the concerns, but the issue is that this investigation started from 2015. It was uh, ordered or requested by the finance minister, and based on that, they have investigated. However, they talk about the fact that they've been able to, you know, um, uh, notice, I mean, they've been able to get some transfers and they're able to get the records about certain transfers. They, however, do not tell us how much they've been able to, uh, you know, uh, get from the unavailable details. And that's where the issue is right cur uh, currently. All right. But have we been able to establish that indeed these letters that are making the round, some of which uh, we have shared on uh, right here on TV, can, have we been able to establish that these letters are indeed coming from the audit service? Yes, um, Israel. So from our checks, uh, the audit service indeed uh, issued these letters. They haven't denied uh, the letters. They say they, have, they issue the letters. But however, one of the things they haven't been able to tell us is how much of the funds have been uh, you know, recovered and the funds outstanding. Now, these monies, how did they end up with GCB in the first place? Well, so you know that um, in many of the uh, transfers, in many of the revenue generation processes, there are banks that transact business on behalf of government. So when these banks transact business on behalf of government, then they would then pay to the Bank of Ghana, where government has its consolidated fund. And GCB happens to be one of those funds. And in fact, the uh, audit service makes the point that it was commercial banks. Okay, so that's a departure from what we may have been told, that is just JCB Bank. They talk about the fact that commercial banks were auditing transfers from commercial banks, and based on those transfers, they realized a thing or two, and they requested further details, and some of these, those details have led to a recovery or acknowledgement of those funds, and they're still on the process. So from the analysis, it doesn't look like it's just one bank, but commercial banks is out. So commercial banks, so essentially, in addition to GCB, there probably may a few more banks. Exactly, from, from the analysis of the trend. And you see, the point is that, so when it comes to the collection of government uh, revenue uh, in at, at the various uh, areas of, uh, at various points of collection, not only one bank does the collection. Other banks do the collection. Uh, I wouldn't want to mention names of banks which do collection on behalf of government, but I could tell you that other banks do collection on behalf of government. It is not one bank. All right. Is there any suspicion that some money is due the state or tax revenue has gone missing or been misappropriated? Well, so from, from, from my check then from the analysis, um, now it's an ongoing process. It started, I mean, we've been looking at right from 2015 up until now. And from all the discussions that I've had with those within the sector, it doesn't look like any money has gone missing. It's right. a normal banking procedure, one or two consents here and there, but monies haven't been lost as a, process, as a result. So GCB is one of the banks whose name has been mentioned, but they've also reacted to the stories making the rounds. What's their story? Well, so for GCB Bank, they, I mean, they actually issued issue a statement, and GCB Bank talks about the fact that, uh, you know, that 5th October letter was doctored, but they go ahead to talk about the fact that, look, GCB Bank has so, been in so hold on. They say that they say that the fifth October letter was doctored. It's but doctored, yes, I mean that's according to their statement. So the letter has been doctored, and but we've gotten confirmation from the audit service that it audit is authentic. Service, that indeed, 
uh, these letters are from the audit service. So what it means then is that that letter from the audit service hasn't been doctored, but GCB Bank says that letter has been doctored. The next thing that GCB Bank talks about is that, look, for them, and they are showing their shareholders that they haven't done anything untoward. Everything they've done is to ensure that the right processes have been followed. And so it cannot be said that GCB Bank hasn't been able to account for uh, transfers and the fact that GCB Bank has transferred uh, money into unknown accounts. They say that is not the situation. And so the shareholders should remain calm. Mind you, they are listed on the stock exchange. And it becomes a very important issue because it affects their uh, credibility that is to go out. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Winston Amwa bringing us up to date on uh, this story.